Episode 78. Hello, I'm Annie, and Join Us in France is an independently produced podcast about all things French. Today, I bring you a second trip report from Sherry and Craig and their adventures around the Corbière and Albi and a few places that I hadn't even heard of myself, so it was very exciting to hear about them. As always, this episode is full of recommendations on places you can see in the Southwest and also French tips and all sorts of good things that might inspire you for your next trip to France. The only announcement for today is that I'm going on vacation, so I'm taking a two-week break from producing the show. So there won't be an episode next week, the 1st of August, or the following week, the 8th of August. But I look forward to talking to you all again the week after that. All right, enjoy the show. All right, welcome back, you guys. This is uh, Craig and Cherry again. Hello, bonjour. Bonjour, Annie. Oh, how nice to see you again. You're about to go back, right? You're about to go home tomorrow. Well, we go back to Paris for a few days. Oh, that's all and right then. Then we go back to the states. Yeah, yeah, back to work, huh? Yeah. Oh well. Unfortunately. Yeah. Well, at least you'll get a bigger car, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have giant cars in America. <laughs> giant everything in America compared to what we have here. Anyway, okay. So today we are going to talk about two specific areas of France. One is the Aude area, which is around Carcassonne, right? It's Cathar country, which we visited, uh, and you could prob- I'm probably going to do a whole episode about that some, at some point because there is so much to see around there. We just stopped in a few places and you, you'll talk about those. And then you also went up north a little bit around Albi, and that's the Tarn, Tarnigaronne area. Okay, so uh, we'll start with the odd today. Well, the first thing we did is uh, you took us to a vineyard, yes, which was really cool. I've actually never been to one, so that was that was interesting. Yeah, so um, this one is really interesting because it's not a fancy chateau, right? There's nothing much to see, really. It's just that their wine is fabulous and quite inexpensive. It's a corbière. The village is called Camplon d'Od. It's tiny. I think it has 300 people. I mean, it looked tiny, right? Yeah, we zipped around it in a couple minutes. Well, I wouldn't call it zipping because <laughs> it was so narrow. Well, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there was like a little tiny plaza with a fountain and that's about it. Yeah, yeah. It was cute, but it's there's not, nothing much to see there. So you wouldn't normally go there as a tourist because... There's nothing to see. Well, nothing. No. Nowhere is nothing to see. But, I mean, it's not like a big attraction. It's just that I had heard about this place from American friends who were, who had, they lived in the area for several years and they liked going to different vineyards and trying things. And one day for Thanksgiving, they served us this C de Camplon. And I thought, how I have, you know, how I have never heard of this. It it tastes like a fifty dollar wine, and it's really. I mean, it was like seventeen fifty. Yeah, that's their, right. Their most expensive was seventeen fifty. Oh, it was nice. They were really well. Luckily, we had you there to translate, but well, they but the were lady, very, the lady spoke very, English. Yeah, and she was very um, just relaxed and. Mm-hmm. Um, just let us try a few different ones. We found one that we really liked, so mm-hmm. we're excited to take a couple bottles home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and strangely, you didn't like the most expensive one. Right. We're kind of like cheap wine people. <laughs> <laughs> so am I, usually. <laughs> well, one, one thing to say about that, the more expensive one, it was a much more richer wine, and we were there in the morning. So cool. I think if we would have tried it uh, later in the afternoon or with a meal, exactly. I think we would have really enjoyed it more. Yeah, yeah. With a meal, I think it's it would be really good with like cheese or or a nice hearty kind of meal that would call for that. Yeah. 
and and she was very approachable. Some some of the wine places you go to, and of course you haven't probably visited very many, but some of the wine places you go to, they're really very worried about impressing you, and you know, they put on airs. And this one wasn't. She was like, yeah, but but she was quite happy to speak English too. I mean, obviously she was happier that I could translate, but <laughs> but she was happy for me to take photos. She was she was really going along it, and this is not a wine that they export because it's a small production, and so it's not one that you can buy in the U.S. or anywhere outside of France. I'm pretty sure, but they do ship in France. So if you want to try some, you have to buy a case. But you could have it shipped to your hotel anywhere you want in France and then take it home. That would be the, the one way you could do it if you wanted, if you're not going to be visiting. And if you visit, of course, they're happy. I mean, they're open quite a bit. Not every day, not like long, you know, they don't open through the day and night. But if you go within normal business hours, you will find them. That, yeah, it was nice. And they were nice there and it was calm and relaxing. Mm-hmm. We watched through the, the vineyard. Yeah, that yeah. was nice. Took some well, pictures there. Right. And that's another thing, you know, if you're going to be walking through somebody's vineyards, um, buy the wine first <laughs> because then they've met you. They've seen that you're not crazy people who are just going to do whatever cr- crazy things people do. D- just, you know, just go and then you can feel free to walk around a little bit and take some pictures. And it was not a problem. But if we had done it the opposite way you know walk around all the fields first they would have come out like what are you doing this is private property right mm, okay you're right yeah so that's that's good advice for just about anyway all right and then on so that took maybe half an hour an yeah. hour maybe yeah yeah and then we went to la grasse la grasse so that was, that was really fun. That was just a small little village. And you, you had heard about or researched some restaurants, but we wandered right. around the right, the main road that you drive in, um, had some choices there, Yeah, but there was one that we took a little extra time to find the street that it was on right. and it was off the beaten path. Yep. It was really nice. We sat on the terrace. It was uh, like, a second level yep. terrace. Yep. And it was a really nice restaurant. It seemed the like the food was good. Mm-hmm. It was like what was it, twenty three, twenty four Euros yeah. with everything, but no wine, but I mean it I mean it, it is Lagasse is a touristy town, okay? So you will uh, you will get you will pay a little more for a good meal, but it was it was a well made meal and you know, it was original. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. And yeah. it was nice to take the little extra effort to find it. Yeah. Because if we had, I mean, if you just stay on the main drag where the one that you can drive, you will only see, I mean, obviously touristy restaurants where, you know, they have pictures on the menu and all that <laughs> that you were talking mm-hmm. about last time. Right. Um, and, but if you, you can't drive through the street where this restaurant was, I can't remember the name of it now. Was it La Courge? La Courge? It was like le temps temp for Corona. Ah, oui, yeah. le temps des courges. Le oui. temps des courges. So it was called a time for zucchini. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a funny name. But it was a cute little restaurant and very welcoming and all that. And they had they had decent food. Mm-hmm. It was good. If if the same for the same price point in Toulouse, they would always add wine, like a, a you know, a pichet de vin. But over there is touristy, so that's extra. Okay, but I, I thought it was I thought it was a, a good price for. And of course, in the on the main drag, you had a pizzeria and you had a place for sandwiches and you had a. I mean, you have faster and cheaper. Um, anytime you go to into a restaurant that's between twenty and thirty euros, they're gonna sit you down and they're gonna keep you there an hour and a half, maybe two hours, which is exactly what happened with us. So. Right. Yeah. La Grasse is a cute village. It has this little river going through it. Um, it, there's a, I'll put a picture on the website uh, of the two bridges. They're, they're kind of, I mean, the, the, this is a, this is the, the kind of picture that French people recognize because it's a, it's a fairly popular place for French people. And La Grasse also has two, 
uh, abbeys, I guess you would call them. We can only see one of them because we went on a Thursday and the one was closed. But the other one we visited. And the one that was closed is a working abbey, isn't it? There's actual... Right. It's the one that there. that has monks in it and they take Thursdays off. It's, it's cute, but I would say that the, it's in dire need of mm, an original kind of curator should do something with it because, you know, what did you think? Tell me what you thought. Well, it was interesting. There was a group there, and they were holding a private meeting in one of the rooms, and I walked by there, and I could see on their slideshow that they were having pictures of the Abbey. So my guess is they were actually talking about renovating and improving it. Yeah. Because, yeah, there was some definite uh, room for improvement. Yeah, yeah. Everything was a little old. Like, there, they showed this one movie um, and that, was, that was just so dated. It was ridiculous. It made you laugh. You know, it was like, oh, jeez, can you use more like <laughs> yeah it was cheesy but it was good for a laugh it was kind of fun yeah <laughs> yeah the special effects were quite yeah the sp- <laughs> so they have some money that falls from the sky at one point because they say that the king granted them a money to renovate and so they just have coins falling down from <laughs> it's just dumb <laughs> it's just dumb uh, and that movie was only in french which I think, thankfully, because the narration was also like over the top. It was silly. So, yeah, you, I mean, the, the Abbey is interesting, but I think in another 10 years when they renovate it, it's going to be very good. The second one, we didn't have a chance. But this is a very calm, peaceful village where you can walk through the old streets. The streets are very, some of them are really, really narrow. And it's, it's pretty... Yeah, and I I really like they had a lot of local artisans mm-hmm. that is selling handmade things. Like um, there was a boutique with handmade soaps, and then there was um, a lady that makes little items with fabric. So mm-hmm. I actually purchased like an eye ga- eyeglass case from her, and she was sitting in her shop hand sewing yeah. some of these items, which was fun. Yeah. So and I think they had a couple like you know, fashion dress shops. And so it's a nice place to wander, but it's calm and quiet and there's things to look at. Right. And we also walked into a leather shop and same thing. The guy was making everything right there. That was his shop. And I bought a a little leather pouch to put my, uh, the, the, the car paperwork because I had just a plastic thing and it was just not very nice. So I just, but, like 12 euros. It wasn't expensive. It wasn't, uh, you know, it's just yeah, so simple. Really reasonable and yeah. fun to see the artisans creating yeah. their wares yeah. right there. Yeah. I, I thought that was a cute little village. I wouldn't go very far out of my way to see it. I mean, if you're a hundred kilometers away, eh, maybe do something else. But if you're in the area, it's well worth a stop. I agree. Mm-hmm. And then after that, we went to another place called Ville Rouge Terminus. So red city, Ville Rouge. That was, that was also pretty cute. What did you think of that one? So that one had a kind of a remodeled or renovated right. medieval castle. Mm-hmm. So that, that was kind of fun. Um, <laughs> again, I don't know. They put some mannequins in there. That- right. <laughs> That seems strange. So if they were trying to give you the feel like there are people living in this castle yes, and, yes. and stuff. But it was it was interesting to see. I don't know if that was my my favorite place. Right. Right. I th- I think it's like a lot of these places that were the curators were you know, by now they're all dead, I think. And they they just need to update, you know, anymore you don't put stuff like that in a museum, you do it different ways. I mean, the, the technology museum kind of touring technologies have come a long way and they're still behind. So, but Corbière is, is really a quaint little place. I mean, it's, it's just not a high tech kind of, I think the locals probably are very happy with us. Like, well, there's nothing wrong with the, with the mannequins. They're fine. (laughs) I took some pictures of the mannequins. I'll put them on the website. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but it, I mean, it was, it was a fun little place to walk around yeah. still. I yeah. mean, 
It's still a nice little village. Yeah, my daughter, uh, she's not little, she's 17, but she thought they were spooky. <laughs> yeah, you'd come around a corner and there's some mannequin hunched over. It's a little or, creepy. Or there was one on top of a ladder. They were trying to, rep, you know, to show that this man was painting the wall. Well, <laughs> oh, speaking of that, I really did like that. They had some of the original um, painting on mm-hmm. the wall. They did have part that was repainted, but mm-hmm. part of it was original. Yep. Um, so I really liked that. Yeah. You know, it'd be like, equivalent to wallpaper today yeah the way they painted the whole wall yeah and that yeah. was interesting yeah and you know Corbière is a, is a beautiful wine region if you enjoy wine this is one of those wine regions from france that has not been hyped yet but one of these days a famous wine person is going to start talking about it on npr and everybody's going to want to buy it because it's it's really well-made wine so if you like wine, I think it's worth a visit. Okay. There's other things to see around there, but I will do another episode on that. Uh, obviously, Carcassonne is not very far. Uh, Mirepoix is not very far. Cucugnan is not very far. So there's many more places you could see, and you could you could spend a whole week in the Corbière and not see most of it. So... But that's, that'll be for another episode. We just spent the one day there together. So, so that's that. Are we ready to go north? Yes, let's go north. Le Tarn. <clears throat> well, we did come back to Toulouse in between. Yeah. And, uh, oh, that's right. Um, yeah, we spent some time in the city. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you want to talk about that first or do you want to move on to Toulouse City? Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Talk, let's talk about Toulouse a little bit. Yeah, uh, we went into the city. On that next day, yes, uh, and went to the gardens. There were three different gardens that were all connected by bridges, right? And we talked. I talked about that. Well, Elise and I talked about that. I think it was episode seventy-six or something. So it was very recent. Yeah, the three gardens in Toulouse: le Grand Rond, le Jardin des Plantes, et le Jardin Royal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those were nice. Yeah, very very nice. And then we. Um, Spent a little bit of time downtown, Mm -hmm. Uh, went to the city center and had some lunch there, Mm -hmm. and wandered around a little bit. Mm -hmm. How do you like that, just wandering around Toulouse? Was that... uh, That's what I I enjoy doing that. Yeah. I just like, just going wherever, uh, (laughs) finding interesting little streets and Mm -hmm. uh, looking at the shops. And Toulouse is not super touristy either, so... It's like local, real life. Yeah, that's what it felt like. And a lot of the streets are blocked off to cars, mm-hmm. um, so it was easy to wander around. I mean, some of them are just narrow and cars do come through, but yeah. it, it was very fun to roam around. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a pretty city. Yeah. Yeah, and the river and the bridge. Um, there's a really old bridge there. Mm-hmm. And they even have a mini London Eye Right. Paris will across the river. <laughs> so we didn't go on that, but um but there's lots of places to look at and see. Yeah. And if you're not looking for a intense experience, you know, then it's perfect. You know, if if what you want to do is walk through old streets, maybe pop into a shop now and then, it's perfect. Yeah. And there's um, you know, we we're not here long enough to see them all, but there it seems like there's quite a few museums yeah. and Definitely quite a few churches. Yeah. And-, and tonight you guys are going to a concert at one of the major museums in Toulouse, the Les Augustins, and they're doing a piano concert. So, Yeah, I guess Toulouse does a big um, music festival during the summer right. for three weeks, and there's right. things going on all over the city, different right. times of day, and so yeah. we're going to catch one of those, yeah. and it's going to be at the... Jacobin? Jacobin, that's right. So we'll get to see a... And the tickets are like 10 euros, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's nothing. It's not expensive. It's not... Okay, so we got interrupted and I can't really remember where we were. But I think uh, we were talking about the, the Jacobin and how the concerts are not very expensive. Was yeah, that yeah, the, su- the summer music oh, festival, yeah, the, I the, guess. Yeah, Musique d'été is what it's called. And it's three weeks in July. It's It's very nice. In August... Toulouse is dead. Okay, you have to know this. Nothing happens in Toulouse in in August. So if you're planning to visit Toulouse, avoid August, I would say. There's nothing much cultural. Even the most restaurants close. 
Eh, it's not. It's not a good choice. Yeah, July is good though. Lots, lots of stuff going on. Yeah. So uh, on Saturday uh, we went to a steak restaurant in Toulouse, which, which is one that uh, <laughs> that Annie took us to before. Right, last it's a time. favorite of ours. It's called L'Entrecote, and it's a very simple steak and fries restaurant. So you walk in, they ask you if you want what color wine you want. Which, and by what color wine they you, they mean rosé or red? <laughs> they don't think they I don't think they have any white. Well, maybe they do, but I've never seen anybody order white there. Um, nothing that sophisticated. <laughs> and uh, and they ask so the color of wine and how you want your cook, meat cooked. There's there's not even a menu. Um, it's just how do you want your meat cooked? So you tell them. So what are the ways you can have your meat cooked? You remember your your little French lesson? Let's see. Oh yeah. So there's. Bien, bien cuit. Yes, bien cuit. Bien, bien cuit, which is well done. Yes. And then a point. Yes. Which is medium. Yes. And then I can't remember the others because I'm not interested in that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the other two are signon, which is rare, and bleu, which is more than rare. And that's how I order meat because I love blue. It's very nice. It's anyway. <laughs> have to be more adventurous. Well, yeah, it's and it's yeah. If you didn't grow up that way, you probably it'll probably just put you off just thinking about it. So yeah, but the, the what's nice about this restaurant is that the meat comes in this nice sauce, and it, the sauce is a secret, so you don't they don't want to tell you what's in it, but. I'm pretty sure that it's duck fat because one day we were there and we stayed a very long time, so long that they put little burners underneath your plate to keep everything warm. And both of our burners went off. And so the, the food, well, the leftovers had time to solidify and get cold and it solidified exactly like duck fat. And I've seen plenty of duck fat in my life. So that was duck fat. Now, what else they put in there? I think there's some thyme. There's probably parsley, but I can't tell. I, I have a friend in California who tries to uh, imitate that. We've tried a few times even together. Uh, we didn't get to it yet. so <laughs> It's really good, whatever it is. Yeah, and the fries are homemade, and it's, it's all you can eat, homemade fries. And then for dessert, they have some really good desserts. My favorite is the profitrolle. That's what we had. It was really good. <laughs> Profitrol are like uh, cream puffs with uh, ice cream in them, or they—I don't know if it, there it's ice cream or just a just a cream. Anyway, it was remember? an ice cream. It was ice cream, mm -hmm. and then it's uh, chocolate sauce over it. It's yummy. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was very good. Very yeah. very good lunch. <laughs> Uh, after that, we went to um, the church. I don't remember the name. Saint Serna, the basilica. Another the basilica. Yeah. Uh, she was very nice. It's a pretty church. And then from there, we needed a little relaxation, so we went up to the Japanese gardens. And uh, I highly recommend those. Yeah. Walking through there. Yeah, the Japanese gardens in Toulouse are, they're nice. They, I think, they won some awards, and uh, you know, people go take wedding photos and fancy photos and stuff. It's it's a nice place. Yeah, it's not big, but it's no. really beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and there's some giant koi fish in there. <laughs> they, they're like almost monsters. But it's, it's really pretty. The French-fed koi fish. <laughs> yeah, duck fat. <laughs> duck fat. He'll do it. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, that evening we came back for a, a party at Annie's house. Yeah. And uh, we met... Uh, uh, a man who works at Airbus. Yeah. And he. Like almost everybody here. Yeah. <laughs> and he was practicing English. He spoke really well. Uh -huh. uh, so, so we had someone to talk to. Uh huh. And uh, we were planning a trip up north, which is what we'll talk about next. Yeah. And he recommended a couple places. And so I'm really glad that, that we were able to meet him that evening. Yeah. Uh, because some of the highlights of our next. Uh, trip that we're going to talk about, right? Uh, were and, places he recommended, and these are a couple of places that I had never been to myself, so that I couldn't have told you to go there because I didn't know. But now I know I'm going to go check them out. Well, I didn't go with you, but uh, I'll go. I'll go soon. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to tell you that this is the big reveal. These are the places that only French people know about, and now you. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So the, our plan was, our plan was to go up to, um, Saint Antonin, Nobleval. Yes. And then down to Albi. But, mm -hmm. um, Anthony recommended that we stop into, or, well, he recommended three places, but, um, Puy Celsi was the first one yes. on our way. Yes. And so. That, and you can all, you can see all of this stuff written out on the website. Okay. Just, uh, join us in France.com forward slash and the episode number. I think this one is going to be 78. Yes, it's 78. <laughs> so Pucelsi has now become our favorite place. Now Your favorite place. Southern, southern France. It's, Wonderful. It's, it's a nice, quiet, it's, well, first off, it's up on a, on a hill. Uh huh. Yeah, which I love because we had, you know, work, it's a smallish town and you can walk all around the town and have 360 views, you know, of mm -hmm. the, of the valleys, mm -hmm. just, just gorgeous views. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we were there on a Sunday and it was nice and quiet. Uh, not very many people were there. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were able to find parking right at the top. So, uh, made it easy. Yeah. Not even, uh, we enjoyed, arduous. enjoyed a, uh, fantastic lunch with views. Out over the valley. Uh-huh. Uh, just very, very enjoyable. And how did you pick that restaurant? Well, there were just a few. Mm -hmm. There's not a ton of restaurants there. Mm -hmm. It's pretty small. And the first one we went to had most of the tables reserved maybe for a tour group. Oh, I see. And so then we just went to the second uh -huh. the second one. And, um, yeah, they made space for us. And very good. It was really nice. Very good. So that was Pris. Celsi, puis Celsi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the valleys around are just really lush and it's farm country. And mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's really spectacular. Just the, the view driving up, it kind of jumps out at you and you're like, yeah. wow. Is that, isn't that the place where you said you saw some fancy cars? Oh, and, yeah. Uh, I, I think that it must be a spot for people that like to kind of drive their cars because it's a nice drive getting there and mm -hmm. then it's really spectacular once you get up in the city. And mm -hmm. We saw a lot of classic kind of cars, classic cars yeah. but convertibles and uh -huh. yeah, people that were really enjoying their <laughs> drive. So yeah, it was kind of fun. A couple um, British, you know, British cars. So I don't know if they brought them over and then Anyway, mm, yeah, but yeah, it's a ni really nice town. Very nice. And you said it was not too crowded. Like, oh, not at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's great. Once again, yeah, we were able to wander through the streets, just some, some really narrow streets. And um, there was a church there that we went into as well. Uh huh. But yeah, the spectacular views. Right. And see, if you went to Carcassonne, for instance, on a Sunday in July, it would be mobbed. I don't care what Sunday in July, it would be, the crowds would get on your nerves. Whereas this Puy a few yeah. people, a few classic cars, nice little restaurant. Okay, the one restaurant was full, but there was another one. You know, it's it's a nice, it sounds like it's a nice, pleasant. Yeah, and I think there were some art studios there as well, mm. but n none of those were open on Sundays. Okay. Some artists and artisans, not as not very many though. Yeah. Just a handful. And so if you like to shop, it's really not that <laughs> kind of a town, um, or village. It's really small, Yeah, but, but it's just relaxing and beautiful. That's so, great. That's great. You just want a nice drive for a nice lunch with a nice view. Very nice. Oh, one other thing that impressed me is a very clean city and well-maintained. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is not always the case. I mean, some of these places, they don't really care that much. So that was, that's good to know. Cool. So, puis celle-ci. And then you went to... Uh, Brunichel. Brunichel. Very good. Yeah. And I love that. That you, was really, okay. really great. It's up on a hill, too. But more... There's a castle there. Mm -hmm. And it's up on a cliff. So, it's pretty spectacular. Oh. And it looks down over the river. Uh-huh. Um, and it's a really steep climb. So, you had to hike up a little you bit. You had to hike up to the castle. Yeah. But you could... Um, uh, zigzag on the road. Okay. If you wanted to, you have to park down below. Okay. Um, but you know, if you didn't want to take a steep hike up to the castle. Right. But I loved the castle. It was not remodeled. There were some rooms that were closed off and we were peeking through keyholes and things like that. <laughs> and you could tell like if you walked in the, the floor might fall out beneath you. Oh, I see. But the, a lot of the rooms were, you know, walkable and it's um it just 
even though it wasn't remodeled, it really just kind of sparked your imagination of what it might have been like. Right. At that time, I think they filmed um, some movies there, at least one. They had some pictures of some filming for cool. famous movies. You don't movies. remember what movie so, it was? I don't. I should have snapped a picture of what it was. <laughs> I didn't you recognize see it. You see so many things when you're uh-huh. touring like this. If you don't write it down or take a picture... Mm -hmm. chances are you're not going to remember yeah but i'm sure you could like on wikipedia find out what film oh very much yeah i'll I'll look i'll look and see if i can find out yeah but it's it's very um picturesque yeah it's just i don't know i mean it's definitely a rundown kind of castle but they did a good job in certain areas making it interesting Mm -hmm. um i like a roof yeah it had a roof okay so it's not that right it's not that yeah it's not just a you know, walls and ruins. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, and they've taken care of certain areas of it. Yeah, so they're probably slowly fixing up I think so. Yeah. And there's, like, a room where they have the original, um, well, I don't know if it's original, but at one point somebody put in some, like, amazing woodwork with a fireplace Mm. and woodwork around a door, and it's gorgeous. And and they had, um, what was I going to say, um, areas where you could walk out on the balconies mm-hmm. and have a view straight down a cliff to oh, the nice. river. So nice. That's really pretty. Nice. So that's Brunichel. That's your favorite. So your favorite, Craig, is uh, <laughs> Puy Celsi and her favorite is Brunichel. Well, I think Puy Celsi <laughs> is just our favorite place to just go enjoy. Yeah, it's uh-huh. definitely our favorite. But I really, I really liked that castle uh-huh. in Brunichel. I don't know. The village, we didn't have time to wander around as much. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'd like to go back and, yeah. and yeah. experience that a Did little Did you more. notice if there were hotels in uh, Puy Celsi? Uh, there are definitely people staying there. Okay. Um, so, so, yeah, there, there must have been hotels there. Yeah, okay. So that's good to know. You could, I guess, spend you could always. There's always a hotel de ville. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if they'll let you sleep there. <laughs> Which they're not gonna. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Yeah, and, and the castle there, there were no mannequins, so that was very nice. That's good. It wouldn't startle my kiddo. Jeez, the stuff that worries her. She's like, <laughs> mannequins, ah! <laughs> anyway, and then you went to some other place. Well, yeah, so Anthony recommended going up to a, a town that's spelled like Penne the Pasta, so like Pen, Penne. Pen, yeah. Pen. And that was pretty spectacular, too. It was also on a cliff. Mm-hmm. and But we were kind of running out of time. Ah. And so we drove through the city. And then as we were coming down the other side, we, we could look back and we could see the city up on the hill. It was quite um, impressive. Yeah. So, yeah, if we had more time, that would have been fun to wander through that city. Wander over to the side that has the that's on the cliff and, and look out. So could you tell if you had to walk up or... It was. Did you notice if there was a parking lot up there? Uh, Maybe not. I didn't notice about parking, but yeah, that's something to to mention. Though a lot of times the parking lots are are down lower. Yeah. And so you park and then you hike into the city. Yeah. Yeah. We just lucked out. Um, there was someone just pulling out of a of a spot. Ah. Um, before, but yeah, in this in this town, yeah, it would have been more tricky to find parking. Yeah, I I think it's a lot. You know, that's this is why French people like this sort of thing. They go have a spectacular lunch or dinner, but then they hoof it all the way to the top of the village. So and they hope that it's gonna make up for it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Second helping of cheese. Ah, I'll just hike a little more. It's all good. <laughs> anyway, so that's Pen. That's worth a visit, but you didn't get to see very much of it. Yeah, we were running low on time. We wanted to get up to uh, Saint Anton, Saint Anton Noble, Noble, Noble Val, yeah, and then down to Albi yeah. before it got dark. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's that's the thing, you know. You have to really these are You could spend a whole week just in in that area and visit lots of different things. Oh yeah, you could. I'm sure there are places we drove right past because there were signs to all kinds of little villages. Yeah, and, yeah. And, if you just wanted to go exploring, yeah, you'd have lots and lots of places that you could go spend an hour or two and then move on to the next one. Mm-hmm. But again, that's the kind of place where you need a car, right? I mean, you can't just. Yeah, 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 definitely need a car. And we, you know, we chose to go 
kind of the long route so that we could see the scenery. And so that took Oh, longer. that's right. That's right. You, you, uh, you had a GPS and you told it to avoid the freeways, right? That's right. And, and I highly recommend a GPS, um, especially if you don't have data on your phone, you're not going to mm-hmm. be able to use the, the Google maps or anything. So, so yeah, just a, um, a GPS that I borrowed from Annie Yeah, that, uh, I could just program in and have the option, avoid the the, the freeways. Yeah. And that took us through a lot of very scenic countryside. Right. I wish it had another option because some roads in France, just like many other countries, some roads are marked especially as especially scenic. So if it had a scenic route, it would be even better because it's, I mean, some, most of the time avoiding the freeways will be nice, but if it, if you don't know about the scenic route and you miss it, that's kind of sad, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, but around there, everything is scenic. I mean, obviously the town, you know, town, town, Garonne, it's just lovely. And I, and I, you know, it's, it overlaps both of those departments because obviously departments are just, it's for administrative purposes. There's no reason why they drew the boundary. Well, there is a reason why they drew the boundary there rather than a kilometer away. But some of these are one or the other. It doesn't really, it doesn't make any big difference for the visitors. But it's just for searching purposes. When you're searching for stuff, it's Tarn or Tarn, Tarn et Garonne. Hmm. Yeah. All right. And then saint antoine de nobleval What did you think of that? Yeah, I really wanted to go to that because I had seen a movie where they did some of the filming there. Mm. So, um, and so I just wanted to see it. And it's really pretty. There's these big white cliffs and the river. Um, and we didn't have a lot of time there either. Right. Um, but but it, there is a nice river. It looks like you could have a nice picnic along the river. There were a lot of people doing that. Um, and there's yeah. canoeing, right? Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah, there were a lot of people. Uh, looked like it was a good place to to start your your journey. And there were there are companies that will rent the canoes. You can ride down the river and then bring you back up in a, in a bus. Mm-hmm. And there were just a lot of people on the river. It was very very calm river. Mm-hmm. Um, so it looked looked like it was quite a relaxing uh, yeah canoe trip. Yeah, not not one of the crazy ones. <laughs> yeah. And we did a little excursion there. We drove through the town and then we just kept kind of driving through this valley that went out the backside of the town. Mm-hmm. And so we just kind of kept following the GPS um, roads to see where it would take us. Yeah. And we came back out another valley and then back down into the city. Oh, that's nice. But yeah, it was just fun to see. And yeah. so you feel more secure when you have a GPS. You can do things oh, like obviously, that. Otherwise, yeah. we would have no idea where we were. Yeah, you know, people, if you have an old, even an old TomTom or Garmin or what's the other brand that people use? Uh, anyway, doesn't matter. One of these standalone GPS that do nothing. They don't do data. They just talk to the GPS. You know, they just talk to the satellites. And those work anywhere you go. This so long as you can see the sky, it works. Mm-hmm. So that th- those are really very good, I think, to to have when you go abroad because you don't know when you're going to get data. Yeah, yeah. So so that was fun just to have just explore that. It was very like hilly and farm country, but mm-hmm. it was fun. So we circled back around that way. Yeah. Um, and then we uh, just headed off to Albi after that. Yeah. And that was the same thing. I just put in our hotel address in the GPS. And- yeah. And told it to avoid the the highways. Mm-hmm. And once again, just very scenic drive. Yeah. Uh, the first thing we did as soon as we left uh, Saint Anton Nobleval, we went up. We we did quite a uh, steep elevation gain, mm-hmm. and uh, we got up on the top of a ridge, and yeah, just just beautiful. Just very vineyards. nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when we noticed there was a lot of vineyards around that area. Oh yeah. So that's. That area between, I think, Saint Antonin, Oblaval, and and Albi, and uh, south of there, that there's a lot of vineyards. There's and a lot of vineyards. When we got to the hotel, we actually there was a map for vineyard tours. So if you were really interested in wines, yeah. you could go, you know, hit a bunch of places around there. Right. And the other place that you didn't stop, where you didn't stop, but it's worth to mention because lots of people stopped there, is Corde sur Ciel. It's a beautiful place. 
I know they have a spectacular 14th of July thing. We were invited to join uh, some friends that were going, but it wasn't practical for us to do that. Um, but lots of people go up there for visit day trips or it's, it's a very popular, it's, uh, unlike Puis LC, I had heard of Cordes sur Ciel my whole life. So that one is very well known. It probably has tourist buses. I mean, obviously, you know, I don't know if Puis LC even can, can even accommodate buses. Did you see any? Mm, poss- I didn't see any, but possibly they had yeah. some parking down below. But yeah. I yeah, don't know. Yeah. Yeah, when we first arrived there, uh, we actually parked way down below, thinking that we would have to walk. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there was there was room there for tour buses. Yeah, so they probably have some that go through there. But I mean, Col de Chourciel, it's lots and lots and lots of them. You can't miss them. So, because it it is very beautiful and and so Albi, what did you think of that? So so we got in in the evening and checked into our hotel. Uh, there's a newer hotel. Um, the Ibis, Ibis yeah, it's an Styles. E- Ibis Styles, yeah. And uh, yeah, it just opened uh, last month. Cool. And so it was very clean, very nice, uh, free breakfast in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a great place to stay. We got checked in and then we went walking out on the square, which was, we had a really good lo- um, location. Yeah. It was right near the, the square. Um, found some dinner. Mm-hmm. Uh, had a very nice dinner. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, yeah, went to bed. And then the next day, we spent the day wandering around. We saw the big church. I mean, it's just yeah. ginormous. It's, it's so big. <laughs> this all brick church. We talked about it in one of the episodes, uh, one of the early episodes. It's in the 20s. I don't know which one it is, but it, it's a massive brick church. And the inside is so ornate compared to the outside. It's kind of a little bit shocking, I think. But it's this beautiful church with this beautiful bridge nearby. And a nice little river, and I, I think it's a, I think it's a, a very really nice. You could spend at least a day in Albi, right? Yeah, yeah. They have, um, you know, some museums, and then the church, and places to wander around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if you could spend days there, but, but it is a, really, but one it's day. a really pretty city, right? And you went to the, we uh, went to the Toulouse Lautrec Museum, yes, um, which was interesting. I mean, mm-hmm. they don't have all of his pieces and but they have a really big collection mm-hmm. and they have a lot of sketches from when he was young mm-hmm. i mean he died young but um but you know that was interesting to see his evolution of yeah his art and so yeah it, it was interesting as a really nice museum really kind of more it's in an old building but it's got that modern curating mm-hmm. feel to it and they've done a really good job um, they have cards for a lot of the rooms with all the different languages. So you can oh. kind of learn about in more detail, the history. Of, yeah. If you want to read up, you can do it yeah, right there. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's really nice. And then they have a garden out back. Mm-hmm. That's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. That's French probably garden. my favorite. It's really, yeah, really manicured, mm-hmm. beautiful French garden. Yeah. And with the trim shrub- shrubbery, and then you can walk along this, um, walkway mm-hmm. overlooking the river mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so we spent a lot of time out there that was really pretty yeah yeah because albi as a city is, is quite beautiful yeah and so yeah from from some of the walkways you could see you could see this manicured garden and you could see out the river and albi on the other side it's very very beautiful right right and you know the kind of the moral of the story with this uh, whole discussion is of course the south of france does not have the same well, the Toulouse area anyway, be it Tarn, Tarn et Garonne, Aude, Toulouse, whatever, it doesn't have the same high market appeal uh, that Paris has, for instance. But there's still so much to see. And it's quite a bit cheaper, too. I mean, Paris is an expensive city. If you want to spend, you know, three weeks in Paris, yeah. it's going to be a lot of money. Yeah, it's expensive and crowded and um, and yeah. it, it's really nice of course and has its own appeal but just to lose as a central location for so many things i mean we could have gone out to the ocean easily Mm -hmm. to the shore but we Mm -hmm. we didn't you know, didn't, didn't have time there's so many things we could see from here and i think from toulouse you know if you I don't know if you rent a airbnb or a thing like that in toulouse and then if you want to go north and not drive back that night well just 
find a little cheap hotel because there's plenty of inexpensive hotels. You know, for for 70 euros, you find a very nice place to stay and then spend the night, come back the next day, you know, and you can, you can really do some lovely day, one or two day trips that, you know, you wouldn't end up doing that much driving, I think. So... Yeah, it's it's there's a lot to see. I'd love to come back to this area and do more. <laughs> and of course, we went to the 14th of July. So we had a, an interesting little um, uh, cultural experience. Our village uh, where I live was putting on a pig roast, right, for the 13th of July, the evening, the day before the Fête Nationale. And so we went and I had never been, I've lived in this village for 10 years and I had never been to one of these dinners and they do them frequently for all sorts of occasions. And it so happened that we sat across because they place you, right? We went, we had to go prepay and then they placed us at table number two or whatever it was. And when we showed up, we were in front of people that we didn't know. Well, one guy I recognized because I walked past his house all the time with my dogs and I would say hello, but I didn't know who he was. And it turned out that he was the, the premier adjoint au maire. So he's like the, I don't know, the, on the city council anyway, one of the high up of the city council. So uh, he, he um, shared some dirt about what was going on in the village, which I enjoyed greatly. <laughs> <laughs> well, not dirt, but, you know, things that happen, you know, the things that people tell him they want and whether he thinks that's reasonable or not. And I tended to agree with him that a lot of the stuff people are asking for and like silly, you know? So anyway, but it was very fun to see how uh, the typical French thing is you bring a tourist and they want to get the tourist drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so they kept serving Craig, all sorts of things. <laughs> yeah, I think they were having fun with that. And it was fun to like our limited French. We would try to speak and Annie would help translate. And he spoke a tiny bit of English. Yeah, a few and, words. Yeah, basically like our French level. And yeah. so, so it was just so fun. They were so warm and welcoming. And yeah. Yeah. And, and then you guys got up and danced. Yeah, they were playing like, some kind of French folk music yeah. and we danced that <laughs> to was the little really fun. things yeah it was really fun <laughs> but it's interesting so the thing it said it started at eight i believe yeah and we didn't get there till maybe quarter to nine maybe yeah yeah and i don't think we saw the first bit of food until nine thirty. yeah well that's so. very typical French dinners are always late and drawn out and and then people started dancing around ten thirty eleven. Mm -hmm. And then, well, you got up in the night and heard them. We could hear them from our house, you know, with the windows open. You could hear them. And like at two in the morning, they were still going at it, right? Yeah, but I don't think they brought dessert until like 11.30. Right, right. At night. Yeah. yeah. So it just went all evening. Yeah, it's a really slow process. And it was like the dinner was like uh, the appetizer was a little salad with a little bit of melon. And then they brought uh, roasted pig with... <clears throat> Which you could see it. I mean, you could see them roasting it right there. Mm -hmm. And then they had the big old uh, paella pans with potatoes and duck fat, pretty much. Potatoes, duck fat, and salt. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Not real health food, but it was tasty. And then they gave us some dessert, right? There was no cheese. Oh. No, but they gave us several different wines yes you know with our different courses yes it, it was really fun it was really a memorable <laughs> evening i mean i think it's rare when you go on vacation and are a tourist to be able to experience local life yeah and so yeah if you know anyone anywhere and you get a chance to or even maybe if you see a sign in a village about an event going on i would I yeah. would think it would be fun to I'll, try it, I, but you may not be invited to some of these things. Well, if you if you're the talkative kind, then it would totally work. You just go and, but see, when you're placed like that, it's uh, if you're in front of somebody that you don't have any affinity with, you know, eh, what are you gonna do all night? But it just so happened that the the people across from us were not super talkative but i we, i realized pretty quickly that they were 
well established, well loved in the village because several people kept on coming and saying hello to them. And and then the the mayor's uh, assistant told us why they were so well liked. So, but it's good to participate in stuff like that. And this is especially true of anybody who wants to move to France. If you are lucky enough to be in a village that has events like this, you really need to go. Because the first time you go, it's going to be really awkward. You're going to be like, ah, oh, I don't really know anybody. But then the second time, well, they've seen you once and they see you around. And if you can talk a little bit. And by the third time, you'll be fast friends and everybody's going to be trying to get you drunk. I mean, it went faster with Craig because he was with me. And But they do this to my husband too. My husband wasn't there because he was on business. He was away on business. But he, they do that to him all the time. They just, oh, here's the American. Let's see how much we can pump into him before he faints <laughs> and you could totally see all these old french guys going <laughs> two more and he's dead <laughs> and they do bring all sorts of different things you know we started with sangria and it wasn't just wine and fruit they had put rum in there it was like strong and then they gave us uh, Rosé, oh, rosé with the ap- uh, with the uh, appetizer, mm-hmm. and then red wine with uh, with a meal, and but they didn't bring any dessert wine. No. By the end, they fell right. I mean, they, I know, but it was only fifteen euros. I have to tell right. them that. That's true. You know, for for free free flowing wine and uh, quite a bit of food too. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's good yeah. value. Oh, so yeah, that was a fun event. So that was the thirteenth of July, and then on the fourteenth, we went downtown to see the fireworks, and we didn't if i had because i w- i went to the 14th of july 2 years ago and it was in a different location and it was easier to get my bearings this is this this is around the bridge where i don't really know the area that much because i never hang out there um but if i had to do it again i know i would place myself a little bit differently we we didn't and we went a little late too but it, but it was still lovely and it was one of these uh, fireworks with m- music, and the the theme was movie music. So we recognized some. It was all right. Yeah, it was fun. Not I'm... the best fireworks I've ever seen, but okay, it was. Good. Yeah, it was fun, and you know there was a lot of people there. And Lots. Felt, yeah, I felt part of the <laughs> celebration, so it was fun. Yeah. So, oh, and we also went to the défilé in the morning. Um, so the military parade, but there's not much of a mil- military parade in Toulouse. There were a few things. I took some pictures, but it wasn't, you know, in Paris, they go all out. They have all sorts. I mean, they have planes, they have tanks, they have all sorts of things. Here it was just a few groups of people and it was low key, but it was still pump and circumstance, I guess. All right, so just a little bit. Um, oh, and there's another thing I wanted to mention. When we were chatting, one night we came, you came home and you said you were coming home on the bus that day, and you said that you wanted to walk. I can't remember how it went. You wanted to walk and find a a drink or something. Yeah, we arrived at the bus stop. I think about thirty minutes early, mm-hmm. and we thought, oh, well, yeah, because, we could just go get a cup of coffee and and sit and wait for the bus. Right, because it, since I live in a village in July, there's like a bus an hour or something, maybe a bus every forty five minutes or something. But if you miss one, you're going to wait a good long time. Right. So you you wanted to go find a coffee somewhere, and so we um, so our bus wasn't due for another thirty minutes. So we dropped on, jumped on one of them that was going the same direction. Yeah. And every stop, we'd look around, look around, trying to find a place where we could just sit and get it, something to drink. <laughs> and nothing. Couldn't find anything at all. Yeah. Right. Because if you're not in a big city, honestly, there's going to be a few restaurants that open at lunchtime. They don't even open at dinner, and you're going to have grocery stores, and that's it. When you get to a, even a village like mine, we do have a cafe in the village, but it's really not very nice. And I never see anybody there. I mean, I don't know when, when it opens or what, because I, it's not, big cities have cafes. It's where it's vibrant, where people sit and talk and all that. But as soon as you're outside of the big cities, it's a suburb. Mm-hmm. There's, there's very few cafes. Uh, you know, you'd have to know where you're going. Yeah. So we learned that. 
<laughs> but it's good to tell everybody so that they're not too surprised. Um, yeah, get your cafe when you're in the city. Yeah, in the city. First. Yeah, yeah. All right, and then the, the French tip for today is, um, okay, so this is also something that you inspired. You asked me what they said. This, you said they said something about passé, right? And it was at a restaurant. And what they do tell you at the end of a meal is, ça s'est bien passé, or tout s'est bien passé, and that's, was everything okay, right? Ça s'est bien passé, tout s'est bien passé. So you're probably like, what are they talking about the past? What? <laughs> but no, it's just, was everything okay for you? That's the question. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think we prepared for, you know, how a, wait, a waiter might approach us and ask us if we've chosen something mm -hmm. yet and how to order. Right. But then towards the end of the meal, we couldn't tell if they were asking us <laughs> if we wanted anything else or if we're done or yeah 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 we hadn't learned any of tout c'est bien passé is usually right before they give you your bill that's when they would bring that up and also the other thing you had asked me is that when you're at a, a terrace at a cafe do you sit yourself or do you wait the rule in france almost 99 percent of the time is that you sit yourself so you go, you find a table, you sit down, they will come and serve you. And this is at a terrace, right? This is an outside thing. But when it's a closed-in restaurant, it's best. I mean, the locals who go all the time, they will just go find a place. But it's best for you to just stand at the door and wait for somebody to help you. But at a terrace, you don't have to. You just go. Except we did find an exception in um, Puisselsi because ah. they had empty tables on the terrace, but they didn't say reserved or anything. Ah. And But they were reserved for that tour group. So because we were kind of wandering out, around and looking at tables and somebody did come out to us. So that may be like rare, but... Yeah. Um, yeah. But typically it, at a terrace, yeah. you, you can just sit. Mm -hmm. But it was kind of obvious that it was set up for a big group. Okay. Because I was looking for a table for two, and they weren't. They were all grouped together. Oh, oh, and oh. So oh. that kind of kind of gave us a little bit of a clue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's right. All right. Well, I think that's it for today. Do you have any more French tips? I can't, I, I can't remember. You ha you've asked so many good questions about French, but right now it's not coming back to me. Well, we asked you about... Uh, um, to take away or to sit, to stay to, uh, uh, yes. to sit at the restaurant or to take the food away. Right, right. So it's sur place ou à emporter. Sur place, right here. So sur place, in this place, sur place. Or à emporter, to take away. À emporter ou sur place. Yeah, and I think, you know, the smaller little deli type places mm -hmm. are going to ask that. Right, you right. You know, a nicer restaurant, they're not no. asking that, but... But yeah, where we've gone to get like a little sandwich, yeah. or they've asked us that. Yeah, sur place ou à emporter. Excellent. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Annie. Well, and um, you're always welcome to come back. Actually, the, the, the mayor's assistant is waiting for you for the next year for the meal. So he's already told you. That's right. And we promised him we would speak much better <laughs> French right. next you year. So there's you... pressure. <laughs> The, the, the race is on. <laughs> well, you have made a lot of progress between last year already, Craig. Um, you know, so you've really come a long way. Well, so the, the first year I would walk up to people and say, in English, do you speak English? And the second year I, I would walk up and say, bonjour, do you speak English? Right. This, this year I've been able to ask them in French. Uh, well, we actually start the conversation in French, mm. and after like two sentences, we, we've reached our limit, <laughs> and they can tell, and they jump in in English. And this has been a much better experience, because mm -hmm. the first time, I don't think they appreciated me saying in English, do you speak English? Yeah. Um, so I highly recommend at least learning a few phrases. At least bonjour is a good start, and then vous parlez anglais would be, you know... Yeah. But my favorite is just to kind of start speaking 
Yeah. In French, let's say. Yeah. Try to say whatever it is you want to say. Right. Even if you are going to mm-hmm. kill it, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Kill it. But- yeah, people have been really nice and they'd help, help us out and even help us pronounce things. Right. So, if um, they can tell you're trying, they will be smiley and, you know, help you out and whatever. Yeah, so this, this time has been a much better experience in, in terms of interacting with people. Wonderful. All right. Thank you very much. Talk to you next year, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Au, revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. This brings us to the end of another Join Us in France travel podcast. You can leave a comment on the website, follow us on Facebook, or look for at Paris Podcast on Twitter. I put lots of information on Facebook and Twitter that never makes it into the shows. And also, this is a subliminal message. Join the mailing list now, today. You can do that on joinusinfriends.com. Look for the green button. Et c'est tout pour aujourd'hui.